This is a 2023 Kawasaki ZX-10R, the famous Ninja. 2022, this model was launched at Bedford Autodrome. We had an awesome day, giving it a good thrashing on track. For 2023, there are some light changes, basically graphics and stickers and colorways, but we thought it was about time we gave it a second look and gave it some proper time riding on the road. Let's not forget, while this thing has got super lightweight LED headlights integrated into the fairing, it's got integrated inboard winglets, so rather than sticky out ones, they're ducted through the fairing. It's got more aerodynamic screen and front end for high speed on a racetrack. It's clearly a, a race oriented bike and a track oriented bike. Most of us are going to ride them on the road. You know, if you're lucky, you get to do a track day a month. If you're really lucky, you get to do loads. But for a bike like this, it needs to perform on the road. And I think it's high time we took sports bikes back to the streets and had some fun. chance to get to know this ZX-10 properly yet on the road. We had a brilliant time at the launch on track last year and it's just a really easy thousand to ride. Oh. The others are all awesome bikes. There's no there's no rubbish thousand these days which is awesome but this one always just feels so forgiving so I don't know just so smooth and effortless and as a road going thousand it's really really enjoyable and i got to admit i don't get a chance to just go out and enjoy a road on a sports bike half as much as i'd like to it's not about outright performance on the road for me you're always limited by how far you can see and the speed limit and you could probably go just as fast down here on a, a good adventure bike with sticky tires. Certainly on you know a naked sports bike, things like even Kawasaki's ZH2, but it's not about that because there's something about riding a sports bike that just feels special. So in order to get the most out of having some fun time on the road with the ZX-10. We have, as you can probably see, escaped the British Isles. We've run away to Portugal, to the very south, to some of our favorite roads that I've ridden riding for years. But tragically, I've never had a chance to ride a sports bike on. We live now in a world of super fast adventure bikes, really capable cruisers that go around corners as well as doing the cruising and looking cool thing. Street bikes like Kawasaki's own ZH2s. You know, that, that world of street performance bikes, naked performance bikes is so, so advanced. It's easy to kind of overlook super bikes, overlook pure sports bikes and go, well, I'll have something that's almost as fast, but a bit more practical. Riding here on this bike has reminded me that there really is something special about riding a race bred, race developed bike that's designed for people to win world superbike championships on and taking that and riding it on the road. And you know you're never gonna get anywhere near the limit of what the bike's performance is, but there's something special about riding that caliber of machinery, that caliber of bike, and then enjoying the road. And you can still go quick if you pick the right places, you pick corners with good vision, you can carry plenty of speed and you can start to just exploit that power and that chassis and that handling and the phenomenal brakes. Some days I like to take a rubbish bike and ride it to within an inch of its life. And other days it's really nice to ride something super special and spend a day attacking apexes. So I say, let's bring back sports bikes. These things, we were inspired for generations through the 80s and 90s, you know, super bike magazine, fast bike magazine, performance bike magazines. We had generations of yearning after these things. And instead of wanting to wear Lycra and pedal up a hill in a sunny place, we used to put leathers on and ride flat out as fast as we could everywhere. And that's kind of tailing off in motorcycling world. It has been for a while and I kind of want to bring it back. I've missed it and I've run away from it as well. And now I'm coming back to it. It's time to enjoy sports bikes again for what they are. Not that comfortable, not that practical, but by God, are they special. So the ZX-10, there's a few things for me that set it out from 
the other bikes in this class, namely around Kawasaki's approach to the problem of making a modern high-tech superbike. Where others have gone for a million menus, a million options, very, very customizable, tunable bikes where you can press buttons for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, Kawasaki has kept it very clean, very simple. If you go and select the rider modes, you get four rider modes and you can choose engine power map and traction control map. They've, they've really distilled down all of the options you can have and just kept it simple. Power, traction control, leave it at that. You just, just get on it and ride it. It is what it is. And the flip side to that, or sorry, the partner to that, is the fact that they've made a very well-rounded bike. There's no one part on the ZX-10 where it's fighting you while you're riding. There's nothing extreme particularly about the way it makes its power or the way it handles. So you're less inclined to try and hide those things away with electronic aids. You just get on it. It's got, a, I think the front end on it is still one of my favorite feeling front ends. It was definitely really impressed me on the track. And on the road, it's, it's carried that confidence through. Again, good, nice, dry roads, but from two corners in, I had so much confidence to put the bike onto the side of the tire and drag it into an apex. It, it's, there's something about the way they've set the front end of that bike up, the forks they've put on it with the external cartridge. It just feels confidence inspiring. And that's a very good thing if you want to enjoy riding bikes at a quick pace on the road. The engine's the second part for me to the Kawasaki. And again, it's one of those things that some people will love and some people will want more. When you ride it on the road, using that kind of mid-range spreader power, it is a very tame, easy-going bike. Don't get me wrong, it is ballistically fast when you let it sing all the way up to the red line, but in the mid-range, it's so smooth. It feels like a really, really good 600, which lets you, again, get on with riding roads like we used to ride them. You're not opening the, corn, the throttle off the corner and fighting the thing away from the turn. You're not coming off of a turn, battling against horsepower, trying not to run wide, and then trying to get the thing stopped before the next corner. This thing is so smooth that you just come off the turn, wind it up, you get a good noise, you get to use all the throttle back to the stop, and unless you let the revs sing all the way out to the red line, it just builds power nice and smoothly, and then you can break a little into the next turn, and it rides on the road for me it rides more like a really really good 750 until you get into that last sort of third of the rev range when it comes alive and shows its true 200 plus horsepower character so as a road going sports bike i think this current generation zx10r is it's one of the most forgiving one of the most all-round liter sports bikes i think you can buy if you're not fussed by having 87 menus and changing every aspect of the bike and if you're perhaps intimidated or not fussed about having that raging, snarling hit off the mid-range, this thing is an absolute gem on the road. I've ridden second and third gear roads, I've ridden fourth and fifth gear roads, ridden all sorts of tight hairpins, and then burbled through villages afterwards, and it's just been effortless to have a fun day and enjoy going round corners fast on a sports bike. Not dominated by the engine, not dominated by how aggressive things are or setting things up, go and enjoy some corners. And for me, that ZX-10 kicks ass at that. <laughs> Motorbikes are flipping brilliant. <sighs>